Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment of Health Professional Radio. Breast cancer is the most common cancer worldwide. Metastatic breast cancer, or MBC, also known as stage four, it can't be cured and brings a different experience than earlier stage cancer. Many people living with MBC often feel overlooked or or even ignored. MBC Unspoken is a new digital platform from Oscar-winning director Cynthia Wade, which uncovers the difficult, unspoken, and real stories about people living with metastatic breast cancer brought to life through artistic performance. Cynthia is joining us today along with Jessica, who's a mother whose experience with metastatic breast cancer is showcased in MBC Unspoken. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, both Cynthia Wade and Jessica. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Well, Cynthia, what compelled you to take on this project? I was really drawn to this project because I really... I uh, love being able to tell stories of people living with very serious health care diagnoses. I feel like there's really an opportunity for them to bring unspoken stories to light. So that was exciting to me. And this particular project was really exciting to me because we were able to take these experiences and then transform them into theatrical performances on stage. Uh, Jessica, how's your life been changed since you've been diagnosed with MBC? Yeah, so I was diagnosed with um, metastatic breast cancer in August of, of 2019. And from that day forward, my life has drastically changed. You know, I know that I knew that life would n- never look the same after after that diagnosis. And, you know, at the time of diagnosis, my doctor and I, we talked about tons of different things. Um, but definitely two topics I remember we did not talk about was self-image and intimacy, um, and those are huge topics, especially as a 30 something. That's really, really important to feel good about yourself, feel good about your intimate relationships. So that's really why, um, how my life has changed a lot of things that we talk about, but then that we don't talk about. Cynthia, was it that aspect of Jessica's story that compelled you to showcase her life? Yes. Jessica is amazing because she will go there when most of the general public won't. She will talk about the really hard things. She'll be super open about it, and it's refreshing, and it's also, quite frankly, really needed. I, you know, Jessica being honest then allows other people to be able to recognize their own experiences, and it also just allows us to take something that's very silent and give voice to it. Mm-hmm. So 100%. Also, Jessica is just full of life and has also this wonderful sense of humor. So all of that is really embodied. Jessica, elaborate a bit on why your challenges with body image and intimacy were the topics that you decided to share. There there seems to be so much about it that is unspoken. Why those, uh, why that area? Yeah, you know, with metastatic breast cancer, for me personally, uh, you know, one day I can feel super sexy and the next day I feel and almost feel like I look like, like the walking dead, you know, so it's just like, it, and it might be a day to day thing. It could be almost an hour by hour. Um, but we don't talk about, well, making that decision of whether I go to bed or stay up and, and be intimate with my husband. And those are subjects that like are, are taboo in our world with or without metastatic breast cancer. But it's like 10 times harder when you're diagnosed with a diagnosis that you're going to have for the rest of your life. So I wanted to make sure that I am like opening up and being vulnerable talking about it because I want others to feel less alone and to say, oh, well, she talked about it. Like I can open up and talk with my partner or talk about with my girlfriends or friends to um, kind of the feelings that the struggles that I'm going through. So obviously those feelings persisted, even though positive things were being said by your husband. Is that one of the aspects that isn't talked about? The fact that you feel that way no matter what is said to you? Oh, you hit it on the head. Yeah. Or people, you know, when you lose your hair, they're like, oh, but you you have a, such a great head and you look so beautiful. You do your makeup so well. You know, the people are being nice, you know, but internally you're like, oh, I I look so different than what I did six months ago. Um, and with metastatic, you could potentially be looking different for years of going kind of a roller coaster on your looks. But yeah, someone can tell you your husband or your best friend tell you you're beautiful, but you've got to learn to be feel beautiful yourself. And that is 
it's a, it's a struggle when you're you're tired, um, like emotionally tired or physically tired. Mm. Cynthia, who is the project aimed at mostly? Is it aimed toward other people who are living with metastatic breast cancer or to those who are their loved ones and, and su support system in order to understand this aspect of that uh, condition more fully? Metastatic breast cancer affects an entire family. It, it affects an entire community. So it's not just for somebody living with metastatic breast cancer. It's really for anybody in their lives, right? Um, like their partners, their children, their parents, their siblings, their friends, uh, including all the way to their healthcare providers so that they actually could have a more open conversation about those very um, challenging topics like intimacy or body image. So it really is something that I think affects all of us. And so my hope is, is that it will allow all of us to have a more honest and nuanced conversation about what it is to live with metastatic breast cancer. Uh, Jessica, what about some of the other unspoken aspects of metastatic breast cancer that you think people need to, to understand that resonated with you other than the intimacy issues? Oh, uh, yeah. Some of the other, you, let's call them themes. Um, you know, a tough one is, is death and dying, um, learning to, to live with this disease, um, especially, uh, for me, having a small child, I know a lot of others with some small kids and wanting to know, are we going to see those, those milestones? All of it. it it's, it's, it's balancing your, your new life uh, and what this is going to look like and, and trying to figure out how do you carry that emotional toll? Honestly, like for me, I explained to my loved ones, it's like a backpack. Like I always wear a backpack, even when I'm sleeping. I'm wearing a backpack. Now that backpack might have a one pound weight in it and it could have a hundred pound dumbbell inside of it, but I am always carrying that backpack. And so I'm having to learn to live with this heavy weighted backpack. Mm -hmm. Cynthia, talk about some of your emotions as you brought Jessica's story to life. How did it affect you personally? Well, Jessica's story, I mean, I think that what was really exciting about this campaign is that we were able to uh, create different performances based on the experiences of different women. Because no uh, metastatic breast cancer journey is is alike. Every everybody's story and experience is unique. So there's dance, and uh, there's music, there's monologue, there's um, spoken word. Um, so the diversity of that was really exciting to me, and really it, it ran through all of the emotions. Honestly, I mean, there's. There's humor and and there's a lot of um, brave statements as well. Um, so it was it was really really satisfying to work on it. From a journalism standpoint, what's the one thing that you hope people take away? And then briefly, Jessica, what's the one thing that you hope people take away from this project as someone living with metastatic breast cancer? often my experiences is that you see breast cancer campaigns that are like full of sort of toxic positivity, like you got this girl, go girl. And this is a much more, I think, realistic um, and impactful experience because we're taking the hidden moments, the hidden stories, and we're bringing them to life. We're literally taking what is unspoken and speaking truth to it. So my hope is, is that we can all have a much more realistic and nuanced dialogue about living with MBC. And I would say, well, I know that I'm always positive Patty over here, <laughs> but I always want to say hope um, that, you know, it's, it's not even hope about, about life in there, but it's hope that like you can, we can open up and have these conversations of like, okay, well, if I talk to my partner, I talk to my friends about my intimacy or my struggles with, you know, how I'm feeling, how I'm looking, they'll make me feel less alone. So I would say hope and making people feel less alone is really what I, 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 I hope somebody gets out of seeing this project. And Cynthia, where can our listeners get more information? Listeners can get more information at mbcunspoken.com. I appreciate both of you joining us here on Health Professional Radio. Both Cynthia Wade and Jessica, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. You do. Thank, Thank you so you. much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Cynthia Wade and Jessica. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at Anchor, Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.